Okay, um, this is <clears throat> an, Excel, an Excel file that, that I have prepared to uh, put together all the ideas that we have been seeing on the different components of the water balance. In yellow, I have marked those parameters or input data that have been uh, <coughs> input by the user. For instance, the depth of the soil in millimeters, the soil water, the excuse me, the SW con parameter for calculating the percolation, in this case 0.8, water content at fill capacity, 0 0.09. At saturation 0.23, permanent wilting point 0 0.03. I have here uh, transferred the values for a sand, a sandy loam, and a silty clay of these parameters for the uh, percolation for the water content at the streams. The soil hydrologic group A, B, and C and the CN2 for, <clears throat> in this case, for a, a row crop. This CN2, remember, that refers to soil water being at field capacity. Then, so we, we have to input the soil depth, the parameter for uh, the percolation, the water content, at the three the three values or water content, and CN2. Then the program will calculate the CN1, which is for a dry soil. This would be the current number for a dry soil and for a saturated soil. Remember that the higher the current number, the higher the surface runoff. That is why when the soil is saturated, it has a much higher value of surface runoff. Then I have put here a set of 20 days with values of total rainfall in millimeters per day. And I have put uh, rainfall on day zero at the start of the, of the period on day five, on day eight, and on day 15. Then we calculate CN, which is the actual curve number, is calculated by interpolating between these three values. If the soil is rather wet, if the soil is above fill capacity, theta greater than theta, FC, which means soil water content above soil water content at field capacity. Then we calculate the current number as the current number of field capacity plus the saturated minus uh, what, uh, field capacity values of current number, CN3, saturated CN2 field capacity, multiplied by theta, which is the actual water content in the soil, minus theta field capacity divided over the difference saturation, you know, saturated water content, permanent wilting point. That we apply if the soil water content is above field capacity. If the water content is below field capacity, we apply this alternative equation. And the current number is now equal to the current number for the dry soil, CN1, plus the difference CN2 and CN1 multiplied by water content minus permanent wilting point divided by the difference field capacity minus permanent wilting point. This is simply an interpolation of the CN between these three values that correspond, remember, to permanent wilting point, field capacity, and saturation. Therefore, depending on the water content that we have on a given day, we calculate the current number. And the current number will be changing according to the changes in the water content of the soil. 
The water content on the soil is this first row. Look that we only have the input, we need to input the initial water content of the soil. But then afterwards, it will be the program that will calculate the value of the water content in the soil. Right? Okay, we said that once we know what is the actual per number, we convert that to the parameter SMX. SMX is a function of the core number and is related to the maximum amount of water that the soil can hold on its surface. So the lower the core number, the higher the SMX parameter. And that will mean that the higher SMX, the lower the surface runoff. Once we have calculated SMX, now we can calculate the surface runoff as a function of SMX and the amount of rainfall. The amount of rainfall is, in this case, 20, or in this case, 30. If we don't have rainfall, we cannot apply this equation. This is the equation that we use to calculate the surface runoff as a function of rainfall and the parameter SMX. So we calculate surface runoff for each day. Look at this. Sometimes we have rainfall, but we don't have surface runoff. Why? Because, look at this, we apply this equation only when the rainfall is uh, excuse is higher than 0 0.2 multiplied by smx so if rainfall is lower than 20% of smx then surface runoff is zero so we not have not all rainy days cause surface runoff this has no surface runoff, and this has no surface runoff. Then we can calculate now the amount of rainfall that is infiltrated into the soil. How? Just by subtracting rainfall uh, to the rainfall, we will su subtract the surface runoff value. In this case, but, uh, infiltrated uh, rainfall is 20. In this case, it is 30 because surface runoff is zero. And in this case, it's 24.3 because the surface runoff is 5.7 and so on. Once we have calculated the value of potential uh, excuse me, for uh, infiltrated rainfall, now we have values of evapotranspiration. I write here pot, meaning that this is the potential evapotranspiration, meaning not limited by water stress. And as you see, they are all in yellow, which means that we have put these values as input. We have calculated them using other methods that we will discuss discussing in a later class. Then we will calculate a function or a factor for water stress. This factor of water stress is only lower than one at the end. What is the meaning of this factor of water stress? Usually, we consider that transpiration is reduced when the water content of the soil is lower than around 30% of the water holding capacity of the soil and defined by the difference between fill capacity and permanent wilting point. So when 70% of the water has been uh, depleted by the crop, then transpiration will start to decrease. So this function or this parameter is calculated using the value of water content that we have and using a threshold of 30% of soil water content. Then actual evapotranspiration will be the product of potential evapotranspiration multiplied by the factor of water stress. 
In this case, we only have some water stress at the end of this period. When the, in fact, the transpiration goes almost to zero at the end. Then we can calculate the percolation. The percolation can be calculated by taking into account only the water content of the soil. Using what equation? This equation. The percolation is equal to soil water, uh, excuse me, SW con parameter multiplied by depth of the soil multiplied by the difference between uh, soil water content and field capacity. This is only valid for values of water content above field capacity. And we also put here SWCC, which would be the maximum amount of soil water that can be stored by the soil, taking into account the water content of saturation. Why? Because if the water content, if we add a, a, very, a very large amount of water, when water exceeds saturation, it will drain instantly. And that is a knowledge by using this SWCC. So we calculate the percolation if this SWCC is exceeded by the uh, by rainfall, then the the percolation will be equal to the difference between rainfall and SWCC. To let you study or uh, look in more detail to all these equations. I have put a copy of this Excel in your Moodle. So now you will open your Moodle and download this Excel to do an exercise following my lead. In any case, 